What's up guys, so winter's over and today's episode I'm gonna be showing you what my plants usually look like after the winter. I get a lot of people that come to my place and they, they look at my plants and then uh, they hear what I say and then they don't believe a thing I say simply because the plants look ugly. If you grow plants that are not native to your area, guess what's gonna happen? After the winter time, unless you protect them, like this mango tree over here, they're gonna look ugly. Ugliness is normal in the gardening world, so get used to it. Now, let me go ahead and show you my plants. So, first one on the list, finally I took the cover off. A lot of people ask, when do you take the cover off? Well, it is the second week of March right now. Um, I looked at the weather cast and it looks normal. It looks like the temperatures are warming up and I think the chances of frost are over. You never know, like last year we had a late freeze in April. But now the temperatures look fine and I decided to take the cover off. As you can see, my mango made it through the winter just fine. This is a fruit punch mango right here. Uh, the uh, flies pollinated the flowers. As you can see, I got baby mangoes coming up everywhere. This thing is fully loaded. What I'm thinking I'm going to do this year is I'm going to lift the structure up. And the main issue that I have with fruit ripening here is the sun. Even though the tree takes a full sun, the mango fruit will not. 110, 120 degree direct sunlight on the mango skin will sunburn it and the fruits will drop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just put shade in this area here so that way my fruits do not sunburn. But yes, so this is the first tree on the list. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the silk floss. Silk floss took a little bit of frost damage, but as you can see, it started growing. Um, I've noticed this tree, as it gets older, it seems to take it a lot better. So I am very confident that the following winter is going to be like, it shouldn't take any damage at all, if any. Because this winter we actually had a hard freeze. What is a hard freeze? That is when it gets so cold at night for so long to the point where your faucets outside, your irrigation system will freeze. That is not normal in my area. That only happens every few years. A normal winter will get in the mid 20s for me for like two hours and then the temperatures will rise. But this year we had two hard freezes that I remember where the temperatures were 27 degrees all night long. So it was so cold that it froze all my irrigation pipes outside and the faucets against my house. But even without hard freeze, look at my silk floss. It looks great. No issues at all. My Hong Kong orchid as well. This tree, when they're little, they are very frost sensitive. But I've noticed as it got older, it doesn't care. I don't see any damage on the Hong Kong orchid tree. This right here is a sapodilla. Chico Chico, this is one of the ones that I have in the ground. It did take a little bit of frost damage because the cover blew off in the middle of the night, but it's coming back, no issues at all. This is a very slow growing plant in my area. So can you grow it? Yeah, a lot of people ask, can you get fruits out of it? And they're expecting baskets full of fruits. It's not gonna happen in our area. I live in the desert, the fruits on this plant, take a year to ripen and in that year a lot of things happen so guess what happened no fruits for me next plant on the list is going to be the rainbow eucalyptus if you guys watch my videos i made a video last week about pruning trees and how stupid they grow when you plant uh, trees too close together uh, well the rainbow eucalyptus was protected by the other tree over here so this upcoming winter it's not going to have any protection at all so we will see what happens but you can see it looks ugly because it took frost damage but it's coming back it is fully rooted in the ground uh, you can see new growth coming up right here and so here is my Suriname cherry now check this out the Suriname cherry looks just fine for the entire winter this plant is one of the few tropical plants that will actually take frost in my area. I know it looks ugly, but Alan, your plant looks ugly. You're lying. You need fish emulsion. You need to put sulfur in there. No, I do not. Check this out, guys. This plant here will take frost in the winter and the leaves will go from green to red. So this thing here looked just fine until a week, two weeks ago. And what usually happens after the winter, if it gets a lot of frost on it, the leaves are gonna stay on the plant they're going to be red, but as soon as the temperatures warm up and it decides to grow new leaves, as you can see, 
I got new uh, growth coming up everywhere. What happens is all those red leaves drop like within a week or so and then new leaves will grow. And this is normal for Suriname cherry in my area. It will cycle its leaves, usually in the spring, especially if you get a cold winter. Over here, I got another, another sapodilla, Chico Chico. This one here, I did not protect. As you can see, the upper canopy took some frost damage, but so far the bottom did not. So it will grow, slow grower, no issues at all. Sugar cane over there, Sugar cane always takes frost damage and it looks ugly in the winter. So there's not really much you can do about it, especially if you live in a cold area like I do. It will grow new uh, canes and then all this got to, uh, has to be trimmed for it to look nice. My bigger sapodilla, I got one over here that is big. I got a video on it if you guys want to watch it when I actually planted it in the ground. But this thing right here is about 12 feet tall. And you can see the upper canopy up there took frost damage. I did cover this plant, and, uh, but the frost cloth actually got ice built up on it and uh, the, tra uh, the cold transferred through the cloth and as you can see, it burned the top. No issues there, all the branches are still green, it will grow new leaves and hopefully one of these days it will give me fruit. It flowers every year, but the problem is damage like this will cause all your fruits to drop. So that's the problem that I have with this plant. Monastery bamboo looking great. This year it didn't really take any frost damage at all. There's nothing showing that it took frost damage at all. It looks green. Maybe a few of the tips look a little bit burnt, but that is nothing for this plant. This one over here is a uh, Buddha belly bamboo. Fully grown in my area, about, I don't know, I lost count how old is it. But the upper canopy took some frost damage. Buddha belly seems to be a little more frost sensitive than other varieties that I carry here at the nursery. This is a green Buddha belly. My ice cream bean tree here in between the pine tree made it just fine, no issues at all. It is actually growing. Uh, it's about 12 feet tall. It is very leggy on the sides, especially because it's trying to reach the sun. Uh, it's not an ideal area for it, but you know what? Um, at least it does not take damage in the winter time. My Hatcher Mango made it just fine through the winter time. Looking good. I did not have a heater on it this year, um, but it did have a structure. Bananas, you can tell this area here did not really get that cold because my banana leaves are still green. And banana leaves are very cold sensitive and they are the first ones to actually show cold damage. This is my Vexeter or false Jabotacaba. It's been rooted through that container into the ground for many years now. It should start flowering anytime, but I never get fruits simply because it's too cold for the flowers to actually get pollinated and they drop every single year. But it's underneath this pine tree right here. And this one specifically right here has made it through 19 degrees. Did it look nice? It looked just the same as this, but unfortunately I do not get fruits because the desert is not ideal for fruit production, especially for the Jabotacaba. Kathy Mango made it through the winter, no issues at all. As you can see, it's trying to reach the sun. A lot of the branches are very leggy, growing towards the sun, which is over here. Um, it is what it is. At least this area here has a good microclimate for regular winters. Now, if it gets super cold, at that point, no amount of microclimate is gonna help me. So usually when I think it's gonna get in the low 20s to in the teens, I have to put a heater for this tree, otherwise it will take damage. But as you can see, it did not take any damage at all this year. Looking great. Gurumi Chama over here, it went dry on me. Um, it has new growth on the bottom. A lot of the upper canopy died back simply because it went dry on me, but it has new growth in there. This new growth in here tells me that the plant just needs time to grow. Uh, somebody told me Grumi Chama will not grow in my soil because my soil is clay, it's alkaline, uh, and it should not grow in my soil because that's what it is, because that's what master gardeners say it's supposed to happen. Well, I got new growth in there and we'll, we'll see what happens over time. 
Uh, and for those of you that are gonna tell me, oh yeah, you got pine needles acidifying your soil, that is a lie. The pH in this soil right here in this area, underneath all the pine trees, it's about 8.2. And that, and these trees right here have been in the ground for over 20 years. So pine needles acidifying the soil, that is a myth for another video coming up in the future. My star fruit over here, it did not take any damage, but unfortunately it got too cold and it dropped all its fruit. Even though it didn't take any damage, that is what's gonna happen uh, with your plants that have fruit ripening through the winter that are tropical. If the plant takes a cold, it doesn't mean the fruits will. So no fruits for me here. My long gang over here made it just fine. Uh, no issues at all. Like I said, this area over here has a good microclimate underneath the pine trees. So normally these trees underneath the pine trees, unless it gets super cold, they do not take damage in the winter time. My pitomba over here, um, it's been in the ground a few years. Didn't take any damage at all. Looking great. Uh, just waiting for warmer temperatures so it can start growing. Now this guy's right here. Since we looked at some of the trees that, look, uh, that made it ni nicely through the winter, let's go ahead and take a look at the ones that did not. So this uh, last year I was a little lazy and I left my African uh, tulip trees outside. These trees right here, in my experience, are cold sensitive and they have died in the past in my greenhouse just just for being too cold as you can see over here yeah they did take some damage uh this guy right here by doing the scratch test it looks like it's dead all the way down that one's dead but if you look at the one next to it you can see this one's green that it's alive and if you look at this one over here you can see i got new growth coming up now, let me give you an idea what I'm looking at. This is a low point in my property. A lot of the cold air will settle to the bottom and it's gonna be cooler in the low areas of your property. So this area here got the coldest. They are cold sensitive and yet several of them actually made it. Now this one over here is dead. Yeah, this one is dead. And then the one next to it, it's alive. And these trees are the same. So that shows you that plants are just like you and I. They're all different. Now, can I make cuttings out of that tree? And tell you that tree is going to make it every single winter in your area because it came from this tree right here that made it through a hard freeze in my area. Not really, guys. Even if I make cuttings out of that plant, it does not guarantee that every single cutting will behave like the main plant right here. And this is why I always tell people, plants are just like people. They're all different, even within, within the same variety. So another tree that uh, um, I'm still learning, or actually I think I got this one figured out. This is a Buddha belly. But this Buddha belly is not your regular Buddha belly. This is a striped Buddha belly. So this one is going to have stripes on the actual cane, if you can actually tell. It does not look the same as a regular green one. But one thing I've noticed about the striped one specifically, it is more frost sensitive than the regular Buddha belly. As you can see, this one looks a lot worse than the one in the front. The one in the front is a regular green, this is a striped. So the striped variety, if you're growing this variety specifically, it's going to be more frost sensitive, so I highly recommend you to frost protect it in the winter. I did frost protect this one, but the frost cloth was touching the canopy and whatever touched the canopy, you can see it got frost damaged. My golden Hawaiian bamboo, um, a lot of the leaves, uh, the tips are burned. Uh, frost damage, very tiny, uh, very minimal, nothing massive. You can see some frost damage up there, but this tree, as soon as the temperatures warm up, is gonna come back very easily. With bamboo, in general, after the winter, if it's cold for the plant itself, what they'll do is they will cycle their entire canopy. You can see it started dropping a lot of leaves in here. All this was clean just a month ago, but it's starting to drop a lot of leaves and new leaves are coming up because as the temperatures warm up, that's when your bamboo plants are going to grow. Sunburst bamboo, actually made it great through the winter. I mean, no issues at all. 
Now let's check this area right here. In this area, I have a ladyfinger banana right here. You can see some of the leaves took frost damage, but also some of the leaves did not. And that is mainly because of the uh, bamboo plant protecting it. And the funny thing is that, ban that banana was there be before the bamboo plant was there. Now over here, my other bananas, they're looking dead. But all, like I said, banana leaves are cold sensitive and definitely anything that hits gets hit by frost, it's gonna die back. This is normal for me every single winter. You can see bananas looking terrible. They'll come back. I still got bananas up there. You can see I got bananas up there too, but those, uh, they were late flowers and they got hit by frost and that's just the way it happens in my area. I can grow everything in the desert, but that doesn't mean that I will get fruits to fully ripen simply because my temperatures are not consistent in my area. My old hammy, giant timber bamboo, it didn't care about the winter. That thing is growing like a weed. Over here, I have my star fruit. Um, I did not protect my star fruit, so it actually got some frost damage. You can see the upper canopy right here. It got cooked, um, but the plant, plant's still alive. You can see it's still green there. It will come back, no problem. But check this out, no fruits for me because the plant took damage in the winter and all the fruits dropped. Normally star fruits ripen in my area around April. All right, so this one here is the ice cream banana. As you can see, it's in open sky and uh, all the leaves took uh, frost damage. It's coming back. Um, getting a lot of messages from people asking if their bananas are coming back, especially after looking like this. Uh, this is normal for uh, banana plants to look like, in, especially in areas that get frost. So as long as your main stem is green, your banana is going to come back. The only recommendation I have for you, especially if your plants are looking like this, is to not keep them wet. Let them dry fully in between watering because the main killer of bananas is actually keeping them wet, they will rot, and that will kill your banana for sure. Now this one right here is uh, my um, Cecropia. Um, as you can see, I was lazy. Uh, I was really lazy. So one night it actually got really cold and uh, I was done covering everything and then I remembered and I'm like, you know what? I wasn't going back in the middle of the night to cover this one, I shoot off. So my upper canopy actually you can see it took massive damage, um, but as, uh, as you start going down the, uh, the trunk on this side here, you can see I got new growth coming up. So this entire canopy is lost. I'm going to have to cut this right here, but it will grow new branches and it's going to regrow. Uh, lesson learned, I'm going to have to cover this one for sure from frost. It will take the cold, but it will not take ice and I don't want to lose the canopy every single winter. So next uh, year, I'm going to uh, go ahead and definitely build that structure. All right, guys, in this area, is going to be my uh, giant passion fruit. Uh, also, also known as Granadilla. Um, this is, uh, somebody corrected me. They sent me an email. I forget what, what they called it. Uh, I think it's a tiger uh, passion fruit, giant passion fruit. So there's going to be a variation of it. It doesn't matter. It's a freaking uh, uh, giant passion fruit, but this is what it looks like after the winter. Uh, anything that takes frost will die back for sure. But as long as the main trunk, it's still alive and you can see my main trunk over there. It's looking great. Uh, I got new growth coming up. You can see right there. Um, another tree that I wanted to show you here, uh, is my ice cream bean tree. Now this ice cream bean tree here, uh, was actually huge at one point and uh, it got massively uh, frost damaged and it died back to like about two feet but now it's actually growing up there it took some frost damage you can see the leaves took frost damage but I don't know if you can see it I got new growth coming up over there my moringa tree um, it's alive the canopy took damage it will regrow and come back Anyways, guys, so that is uh, a mini garden tour. Uh, this is what my plants look like in the winter. They look like crap. When people come here in the winter and I tell them, hey, bananas are easy to grow. Yeah, you can grow ice cream bean tree. Yeah, you can grow uh, passion fruit. 
And then they look at my stuff, they're like, yeah, sure. I'm just gonna watch the other guy that's uh, recommending sulfur, fish emulsion, and everything else, so my plants don't look like crap like yours. Well, sorry to disappoint you guys. If the, the truth offends you, another channel for you to watch. If you wanna be told what you wanna hear instead of what you need to hear, I'm not the guy. This is reality. This is what all your plants are gonna look like in the winter, especially if you grow plants that are not native to your area. So it's no big deal though. Some plants, most plants will come back. Some plants will not. So you just need to know how much plants can actually tolerate. And I'll do another garden tour in the middle of the summer so you can see the difference. Or if you actually wanna see what my plants look like, just watch my videos. You can actually see what they look like during the growing season. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to like it. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? And I will see you next time.